everyone. Welcome back to Bagels and Locks, episode 10, Jason. Double Ep- digits. 10 episodes, double digits, two full hands. Next week, we will be including, uh, we'll be on feet, so two hands and one foot. Uh, you love to hear it, you love to see it. My name is Brandon Rothberg, alongside my co-host, Jason Silverstone, for today, which is Tuesday, July 28th, and baseball is back. The NBA is back. Sports are back. Everything is great. Jason, I know that you had a bit of a tough uh, weekend when it came to betting on opening day, opening week, which we will gladly hop into soon enough. But first, we're going to get things started here and talk about the main issue at hand. The reason why I'm wearing this shirt today, representing the Miami Marlins, I had to pull this one out of the woodwork. It was all dusty and shit. I was, it's been a long time since I've worn this thing, representing the Miami Marlins. And I'm wearing this shirt for a reason, Jason, and that's because the Marlins are in hot, hot water. They have had, as of today, Tuesday, they have had 18 players and coaches test positive for COVID. Obviously, the city of, or the state of Florida, city of Miami, has been a massive hotspot the last month or so. And Mm -hmm. we haven't, they haven't been in Miami playing. They just played in Philadelphia. So, Jason, I want to ask you this. Right off the bat, do you think baseball, the season of baseball, is screwed and that at some point it will be no more? Yeah, I think we're, we're fucked, man, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it would just be so typical. Of course, I just, you know, lose all my, all my picks on opening weekend and then the season just gets shut down for the rest of the year. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, they – they're not doing the whole bubble thing that the NBA is doing. The, the MLBPA didn't agree to doing that. That's not something they wanted to do. And you got all these people traveling all over the place across the country and whatnot. And I mean, as we can see just in one team, uh, I mean, 18 people, that's, that's a lot of people. And you know, how does that affect the schedule and what if that happens with more than one team and how long are they going to be sick for? Like at least you'd have, you imagine at least two weeks, um, which is a lot of exactly, which is a lot of games with this condensed 60 game schedule. Um, so that kind of messes everything up. And uh, I know that the Marlins are the ones who are kind of under some heat right now, but I'm interested to see how the tests come back for the Phillies. And I'm also interested to see what's going to happen with the Cincinnati Reds, possibly the Tigers, possibly the Brewers now who they're playing uh, in a series uh, for these next few days because we found out after game one in which the Tigers play, played the Reds that uh, their DH tested positive for COVID-19 and then they played two more days in a row like uh, as if it never happened. Right. Um, and, you know, you got to imagine that guy was, you know, you can try to social distance as much as you can and do what you can do but at the end of the day he was part of that clubhouse and he was on the field he was playing and at at some some points or another he was in close contact with some people so maybe these people aren't experiencing symptoms yet but imagine two weeks from now you find out some more Reds players and some more Tigers players have tested positive and by that point they've played three or four different series so you'd have to imagine that, that the season would be over at that rate but you know, they're trying to do their best to control it. Uh, what, what do you think about it, Brandon? Do you think that uh, the season's doomed? Well, what's interesting is that Rob Manfred, I don't know if you saw, Jason, he came out and said that the season will not be suspended unless a team is, like, dr- drastically affected to the point where a once competitive team is now no longer competitive because of the virus and players, you know, going out because they tested positive. What is that? What is that? What is that? extent? Like if, if I'm the Dodgers, do I need like at least Mookie Betts and Cody Bellinger to be pieced in order for, you know, so if the Marlins were looking pretty good against the Phillies too, they were, those are pretty competitive series for the most part, honestly, 18 people, as yeah. well is a lot like that I, to me that's a drastic number i guess well, not 
the commissioner. Here's so okay. There's a, there's a lot going on. There's like an incredible amount of information to take in within the first. We've played what four games? There have been yeah. four games have been played, and already the season is like in hot water. <laughs> first thing I wanted to bring up is the Marlins' luck. The Marlins, okay, aside from COVID, have had the worst luck like in baseball, okay? Oh, and that, of course. And Marlins man. Like, bro, you, you're a team that's lucky enough to have Marlins man. Uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, Levy. I don't know his real name. Bro, I know his first name. Oh, it's, it. isn't it, isn't Lawrence, it, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence, Levy. Lawrence Levy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you have Lawrence Levy, you have Marlins man. Um, but at one point in time, you have arguably one of the sickest teams, Stanton, um, Yelich, Zuna, Yelich, Jose Fernandez. Uh, just to name a few. Just to name a few. Okay, the Marlins get screwed, and they open this new ballpark, and it's sick, and they have the fish tank and the thing out in center field, right? They're popping off. Like, everyone's like, Team Marlins. It's probably right around the time I got this shirt. Uh, team just falls apart. They lose everyone. You know, Jose Fernandez dies. Who? No one sees that coming. Yeah. And they immediately are, like, the worst team in baseball. Then, like you said, you know, they're looking pretty good. They've made some some decent moves this offseason. Um, Jesus Aguilar was, like, a really solid addition. He was looking good. Hit a couple home runs in that series. And now you have 18 <laughs> players and coaches testing positive and possibly bringing down the entire season, which we don't know yet. And, honestly, as the days go on, everything's going to get crazy. But this is what I think, Jason, is that at a certain point, probably soon, it'll be a requirement that every player has to wear a mask in the field and at the plate. Because right now it's optional, and I've seen mm. a couple guys do it. Didi Gregorius has been doing it. Pablo but, Sandoval uh, was doing it. Yeah, Pablo Sandoval. Um, no one on the Tigers that I can think No, of. I think there's someone on the Royals that's doing it, though. Yeah. I can't remember who. Their, their shortstop I saw last night. Um, I think that that is totally going to be put in place because how, how could it not? Like, it, it, it doesn't make sense not to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after we saw Juan Soto a couple hours before first pitch, that the news that was announced that he – before before Fauci's first pitch. Uh, before – um, you know, first pitch that Soto was testing positive, right off the bat, I was like, damn, one, the Nats are screwed. And that's really tough. And it's a tough loss for baseball because Juan Soto was arguably the coolest, most fun, energetic like player to watch. And, you know, you lose him at this early in the season. So there's a lot. We, we, we talked about this before. This was something that I was really thinking of was, well, with baseball not being in a bubble and you have teams traveling, what is it going to look like if you have, player test positive and and how does that affect everyone else and now we've seen it four games into the season so you know it's all a crapshoot it's good to see though that baseball is still you know being played at the moment um david price actually mm -hmm. was one of the first players to opt out um before the season had started so he tweeted uh this was on july 27th which is yesterday yeah, uh, he said, now we really get to see if MLB is going to put players' health first. Remember when Manfred said players' health was paramount? I do. Part of the reason I'm at home <laughs> right now is because players' health wasn't being put first. I can see that hasn't changed. So he's got a point, Jason. Like, uh, I think he has a huge point. Yeah. Uh, if players' health is paramount, and there's 18 total people in the Marlins clubhouse that are po tested positive, you would think that the season would just be over right now. Which, right, which isn't the case. Well, there, there is. So there's like the taxi squad, which is basically like yeah. a backup team, which I don't necessarily understand how it works because the majority of those guys would be would be minor league players essentially. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, you have a lot of guys like that are making their major league debuts because of players that have tested positive. So that's you know an interesting story in itself. But, yeah, here we are, haven't even played a full week of baseball. We already have one of the best players out testing positive in Juan Soto. You have the Marlins, a mess. We've had two – we've had the series between the uh, Phillies and Yankees postponed because they're waiting to hear back the results. 
from the Phillies players and yada, 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 the list goes on. So it'll be – if we can, if baseball can survive, I guess, at this point, I would be surprised. But it's yeah. really going to take a lot of effort and, uh, you know, more uh, looking out for one another, if you will, amongst players and coaches and whatnot to really be careful because four games in and things are – Looking a little dim, but aside from the whole virus, Jason, let's talk about what games look like. What do you, how do yeah. you feel about no fans? I'm sure you've seen the virtual fans thing. It creeps uh, That out. I do not like, yeah. Yeah, so what, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, as some longtime listeners of Bagels and Locks may know, I, was, I watched a good amount of KBO uh, baseball before all this started, yes, uh, the Korean baseball. Um, oh, bright and early in the morning. Yeah, or the they had games that started at one sometimes, so I would I would watch a, a bunch of those. But uh, anyways, they uh, I'm I'm sort of used to it at this point. Like I don't really remember what baseball looks like with fans anymore. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I remember when I was watching Game Two of the Yankees Nationals series. Um, they were interviewing Scherzer and they're asking him like his thoughts on it, and he was like. At first, like, I thought it was, like, really strange, but, like, once I was, like, an inning into it, like, I just, like, didn't even notice anymore. Like, I was just so into the game and doing my thing that just didn't didn't really affect him. Um, as you said about the virtual fans on Fox, I think that needs to just stop. That is just the weirdest, cringiest thing ever. They got, like, 50 of the same guy doing the same animation, like, a seat apart from, like, himself, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, not not pleasant to look at at all and it's more it's more for the fans it's definitely for the fans it's not for the players because they can't see it but like I think it looks horrible I think the fake fan noise though I I do fuck with that um I think it would be really weird without that like I think that's like pretty key in the walk-up music and all that stuff I I think that stuff can stay yeah I agree the in terms of the in-stadium sounds. Also, I forgot to mention this. Usually I'm rocking the headphones, but uh, my I'm pretty sure the beats have died. So from here on out, Rip. I will not be wearing the headphones. Uh, but back to the real news at hand. Um, I first found it really odd watching baseball without anyone in attendance. And you also forgot to mention this, but I'm sure you know, the KBO is now allowing fans at their games. Yeah. It's now allowed, um, you know, fans to come in. They have to wear masks, obviously, and, like, sit apart. But well, That's because, of course, in Korea, they've, like, pretty much beat the virus at this rate. Yeah, like, they're, yep. they're chilling. Must be nice. Yeah. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't know what that's like. No. But I hate, I hate the virtual fans. I agree with you. They're distracting. I find that when a ball is hit in the outfield – that I'm not, like, watching what's happening. I'm literally looking at, like, the gross virtual fan. Yeah, I'm like, looking at this 350-pound Cubs fan going like this every <laughs> every fucking four seconds. It's weird, man. Right. It's, it's so weird. It, it for me, To me, it does nothing. I would rather not see anything. I'd rather see the big-ass advertisements, okay, that have yeah. replaced the uh, outfield uh, police. Seating, group. yeah. Yeah, more so than virtual fans. But – I've I've definitely gotten used to it now, mm-hmm. um, and the the in stadium sounds like the the natural sound, if you will, definitely is a nice touch. And it would be really strange if there was just no sound at all. It, the only, you know, it'd be pretty sad to watch. I think. Yeah. Well, what was sad to watch was the the you saw the Matt Olson walk off grand slam, an mm-hmm. opening night for the A's. Like, bro, can you imagine? Hitting a walk-off Grand Slam on opening day, how lit that would be. Yeah. I still – I mean, obviously it would be very lit in the ballpark, but I, I also want to talk about, like, what your thoughts are about the new extra inning rule with the guy that starts on second base. I think this kind of, like, is a good transition into that because um, that was the first time, like – that was the first game that went into extras of the year, and it ended up being a walk-off Grand Slam, as you said. Um I actually really like it. I think it makes things like super crazy, super intense because pretty much, I mean, you have three outs with the guy starting on second. Like 
it's pretty hard to not get that guy to third, right? Like you can either fly out or, you know, hit to the opposite side of the field, hopefully. And pretty much every situation I've seen, you get a guy on third. So then you're looking at a guy on third with two outs to go pretty much uh, every time. And I was watching the the Pirates Brewers game late last night and the the same thing happened. I I think it's just – I think it's really cool. I think it makes the the game like a lot more intense. Um, and it's like, there's sort of like a more of an opportunity for like a clutch type of type of thing, if you will. Um, and I think it speeds the game up a lot, which is important. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I'm personally a fan of it. I disagree with you. Yeah. Um, obviously. <laughs> uh based on based on my reaction i mean look it's cool and i think the whole point of it is that it's done is put in place to speed the game up without a doubt 100 percent. but the thing is is that if you have if you're the away team right so you're batting first and you have a runner on second okay and you can easily bunt him over so right now you have one out and a runner at third yeah you have a pretty solid chance of scoring that run okay so let's say you score the run sacrifice fly um, then you go to the bottom of the 10th and you're the home team, you're batting, you're trying to tie the game or win on a walk-off and you can't, you don't score that run that's on second with no outs. It sucks because it's, you know, I mean, it's baseball, right? Like, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's tedious for them because it's like, well, they were able to pull off a successful bunt and we couldn't in retrospect. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just – I'm not the biggest fan. I would much rather see it earned. I don't think it's earned. I don't think a win with this new rule in extra innings is earned, honestly, unless you hit a home run right off the bat. Um, but I just don't – I'm not for it. And I guess, you know, it, fans like it because it speeds up the game, but I, I really don't like it. And they did say, though, that in the playoffs, eventually, that that, <clears throat> that rule will not be in place. I mean, I can see how that would make sense. Right. I'd be interested to see if, you know, well, one, if we can, if we'll be talking baseball a week from now, but two, if, uh, you know, we get to talk about it for the next couple of weeks, what your, if your opinion on that will change at all with the more games that you see that happen in, or if your just hatred will go stronger. Yeah. I'm already all for it. But I think I think people in your boat will slowly start to like it. Yeah, it, it's just change, and obviously with baseball in the world now, it, baseball has never been this different ever, ever. So you gotta, it, it is what it is, and maybe you're right. We'll, we'll we'll see how it you know how it eventually plays out. But um, before we move on, Jason, I wanted to bring up uh, pitchers. First mm-hmm. thing first, Shohei Otani had not played in a couple of years on the mound. Jeez. He got rocked. He has an infinite ERA right now. Yeah, he did he didn't record <laughs> now. It's still going. He's still <laughs> on my runs. As you oh speak. my god. But uh yeah, are you surprised there or no? With Shohei? Yeah. Of course I'm surprised. This kid's <laughs> supposed to be the truth and, you know, the double threat and the big deal. You got to get an out, dude. You got to get one out. <laughs> I mean, come on. Jesus. Like, have him, have him hit a ground ball or something. Just figure it out. You got to you gotta figure something out. How can you not? You could probably go on the mound and get an out, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard. Another thing I want to say real quick with the with no fans or anything, I mean, you can really hear how hard these guys are throwing the goddamn ball. I mean, when these guys are topping out at like 99, 100, and you hear the catcher catch it in his mitt, you're like, holy shit, like, this like, guy is throwing. <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, I don't think – I'm kind of surprised about Otani. But listen, when you, when you deal with Tommy John and you've been out for so long – you're not yeah. be, I mean, one I, I, out though, man. One out. I agree. Get out. Next, his next outing, he'll be fine. He will. I think it'll be the complete opposite. You heard it here first. That's my prediction. He's going like a two hitter. Um, also, you think they'll ever have him hit this year? Yeah. Well, because he, he would have to play DH because you can't be a pitcher and and hit. Well, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he would. He's he would be the DH. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, we're <laughs> well, because I just know that the, with this shortened season, they're trying to save people's arms and all the, the energy, the the health, and yeah. what have you. So you, well, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. He's, at, I mean, he broke. Well, why haven't we here. seen him hit yet? Has he hit yet? I don't think he's hit yet. I think he has. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And that, I mean, he's only at the plate like three times a game. It's not like he's, you know, throwing it from the. He's not playing in the outfield or anything. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, real quick, though, I want to talk about um, two pitchers, Verlander and Kluber. Uh, it was initially reported that Verlander would be out for the season, and he proved everyone wrong. He said that information was false. And Corey Kluber, who just got traded to the uh, Texas Rangers in their new ballpark, pretty sweet, their new jerseys as well, awesome. Um, Kluber pitched one inning, and that was it. So two guys, Jason – uh, obviously, one of them, you can see, pitched for Detroit. I mean, we love JV. It's tough to see him hurt at this point in his career. But then you have in Corey Kluber, this guy who dominated us for years and years, um, two amazing pitchers. It, is it time for them? Is, I mean, especially Verlander. Do you think he's really, you know, at, at the I mean, high end of the stick of his career? You could Fading say out? that, but you could also say he won a Cy Young last year. Um, so you, you know, it goes, it goes both ways. As you get old, you're going to get a little more injured, a little more hurt. He said it's going to be a couple weeks. Um, but I thought, I mean, I watched him opening day. I thought he had good stuff. Uh, he got taken deep twice, but that's just the type of pitcher that JV is. I mean, he's not yeah. afraid to, you know, throw, throw it in the, in the, uh, in the box. And, you know, he, he's, he tries to just beat beat the batter straight up, and that's that's kind of what all the best pitchers do. That's what Cole has started to do recently, and kind of what's made his stuff so special. Um, yeah. But other than other than the home runs, uh, he looked phenomenal. So I I think that like yeah, the injury sucks, but like he's still pitching great in my opinion. Yeah. And then yeah. Kluber, I honestly didn't even know he was injured. Kershaw, I did know, uh, tweaked his back though. Um, yeah. And that rookie Dustin May looked incredible for them. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was one of the highly regarded prospects, and uh, he reminds me a lot of like Noah Syndergaard, like a dude with like funky ass hair yeah. that just doesn't look like he'd be in Major League Baseball throwing a hundred on the street, and then he'll throw a hundred with like boom, like crazy ass movement. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. He looked pretty awesome, but I think we're gonna move on here and discuss a little NBA action. Hopefully by next week we can still talk about baseball being played out. Who knows what everything will look like? If the Marlins will even exist, <laughs> we're yeah. gonna find out. Um, and yeah, let's move on to a sport that has zero positive tests in the NBA. So Jason, we've seen some scrimmages. Mm -hmm. uh, players are back in action. Players are at the strip club, if you will. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot going on in the NBA. We've seen some new camera angles. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on how things have played out? And how does the NBA look without any fans? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, the NBA season actually starts this Thursday. So probably tomorrow uh, by, the guy, by the time you guys are listening to this. Um, but – uh, I think the scrimmages, they, they look fun, man. They look – I mean, basketball is back. What, what more is there to say? It looks great. Uh, I remember I watched the first one between the Clippers and the Magic, I think it was. First uh, – it was like a, it was a week ago. Um, who, who do you think it was? Wiz – no, no, no. The Wizards played the Nug Denver. That was the same day, but it was that was the second scrimmage. I think the first one was the Clippers Magic. But uh, I could be wrong. Who cares? Scrimmage game. But uh, I thought it uh, – the first couple of minutes, man, everyone was just missing everything. Like, it was just – it was tough. Like, you could tell these guys haven't played in a couple months. But, you know, after, like, the first quarter or so, it really picked up and uh, was looking competitive again. I think Paul George looks phenomenal. I think he's – like, hasn't looked this good since before his injury. That was gruesome he he years ago. Fun touch bro he was looking nice yeah like time uh, didn't pass for him he's still mm -hmm. not Cl clippers could be very dangerous uh but yeah i thought the the scrimmages looked cool i thought so the way i described this to one of my friends is um i was talking 
earlier in the segment we just did about baseball about how I was sort of used to having no fans there because of the KBO. Well, there's no Korean basketball that warmed me up for no fans <laughs> or anything like that, let me tell you. So that was a culture shock to me. That was a very, yeah. very, very, very strange with no people at the basketball game. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a weird feeling, cold feeling. I, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. it just, I felt very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's it's crazy too because also you know same thing with baseball. Like you can hear players' names be announced, and you hear like when substitutions are made. Like you have like the public address. Like all teams and all sports still have a public address announcer. It's not like there's no one that's running everything within the stadium. Um, it is odd to watch basketball, but the the thing is, is you know you're so like in terms of like the camera angle. It's not like in baseball where if someone hits a home run, you see the entire outfield stands with no one there. I mean, mm-hmm. in basketball, you're, it's focused on the court, right? So you only see a couple rows of no fans. It's not – I mean, it's, it, don't get me wrong. It does look weird, but it's not – It's not uh, the same. It's, yeah, it's not the same. But it's uh, – the, the new camera angle, but I, I think they had – I want to say I've seen a little bit of this back uh, during – they might have even had it during the All-Star uh, game. But it's like this – I don't even know how you describe it, but it literally is if you're, like, sitting on the court watching the game courtside. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Like, you actually – you feel like you're right there watching the game. I was just curious to see, you know, what, how do you – what do you think about that? I mean, it's, like – it's pretty awesome. Like, that That goes yeah. without saying. Uh like some of the passes you see these guys pull off and stuff and do is just incredible, especially when you, you have the view of like, wow, I'm like actually standing right behind Chris Paul right now. Um, yeah. But you guys shoot it. Like it's so clean. Like if, yeah. if someone else wish it, like in your, it's like you're right there. It's crazy. It's but really there's cool. also been times where they've switched to that angle. And I was, I've been like, this is just not the time. Like, can like go, go back. Like I'm, I'm trying to see the, the normal angle. Cause sometimes when they, like it looks good. It looks good at first, and then like like they switch to play to the other side of the court, and it's just like it's just all the way over there. And it's like I want to I want to see what's going on over there. I can't really see seven foot guys in my face right now. Like I don't know what is happening on the other side of the court. For the most part, I do I do think it is uh pretty pretty awesome though. Yeah, yeah, I I love it. Um, we so we forgot to actually mention this earlier with baseball, but in the NBA, it's much more different, if you will, um, the broadcasting and the play-by-play. So I watched – I saw a couple a couple of games on uh, NBA TV. It was like they had four, you know, broadcasters, and you saw them at the top of the screen. It was like a Zoom call, right? Yeah. So the, the sound quality was not that of someone being on the court watching the game. Like, you know what I mean? It sounded it yeah. kind of, sound like this. I think that the that's just for the scrimmages, though. I think for the actual games, they do have – because ESPN released something saying how they're not – like, Hubie Brown won't be in the bubble because he's, like, 100 years old. Like, they, they actually do have people that are quarantining in, like, in the bubble with them and that will yeah. be calling the games when they actually start. But you're right, for the scrimmages, it has been Zoom, like, over Zoom. And their reactions are, like, delayed. is pretty awful. Yeah, I was – right off the bat just like what is this like how come i i also saw a tweet too that was like there's plexiglass in front of the announcers like down on the court because espn was tweeting out pictures of like what the arenas and like the court look like and stuff Mm -hmm. and i saw a tweet like that so when i turned on the game and it sounded so weird at first i didn't they didn't show the broadcasters at the top i was like where are they where are they doing this play-by-play from and then they showed everyone like in their homes and I was like is this how it's gonna be for the regular season Mm -hmm. well for the for baseball as you said they're not in the park they're um they're at their home studios wherever wherever that may be yeah but they did it way more professionally like I don't know why it just couldn't have been done like that but whatever the uh, the MLB it was the Yankees and Nationals game on Saturday and I thought it was really interesting Joe Buck um, was doing play-by-play, and he was like, I'm here in Denver, and John Smoltz, I think, was like the yeah. caller. He was like, John's in our MLB studios here, and our producer's there, 
And I was like, everyone was all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, everyone was all over the place. And it sounds like they're next to each other in the studio Mm -hmm. or at the ballpark, if you will, Um, which is really crazy on, you know, Fox's end, aside from the virtual fans that we hated. Um, It sounded great. You know, over in the NBA, I'm sure once the regular season starts up again, that the broadcast will go back to normal. But um, yeah, the, we, we forgot to mention that in baseball, how Todd, Matt Shepard tweeted out a picture, or sorry, Dan tweeted out a picture that he was at, um, he was downtown in the, can't think of it, up in the press box and was recording live from there. Whereas mm-hmm. you had Matt Shepard and uh, Jack Morris in the Fox Sports Detroit studio calling the game together. But, you know, like you said, uh, everything should sound back to normal once the regular season starts. So the biggest news for a while was where the heck is Zion? Why hasn't anyone said anything as to when he's coming back? But he has returned. He's healthy, seemingly healthy. Uh, I think he's still – he had to, what, quarantine for four days, was it? Yeah, I, I, it might have been four days or 48 hours. I'm not sure. But he the whole time he was gone, they, they, they were testing him. So yeah, yeah. He, was, he was healthy all throughout, and then he had an additional short quarantine just to be safe. Right. Well, I'm sure that everyone that's listening right now or watching is familiar with the situation at hand with Lou Williams, mm-hmm. uh, which oddly enough deals with – our um, game, our four blank of the apocalypse, if you will, at the end of the episode. So you guys got to stay tuned for that. Um, but it was announced that – so how did it happen? It happened because Jack Harlow – Well, on- before that, it was announced that he's leaving for a family emergency. Like, that was just tweeted out because that's what's happened for a couple of different players that have had to leave. Just, like, for an urgent family matter is what it, what it that, is disclosed that's what, as. Yeah. That's what it's been listed for most players. So that, so we see that, right? So we, we knew he wasn't there in the first right. Part. Like, we knew he right, left right, the right. bubble. We knew that he was leaving the bubble. So we had a funeral to attend. He had, a, 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 you know, an actual absence, excuse mm-hmm. absence. So he leaves. And then out of nowhere, I come across this, like, tweet. And it was, like, Lou Williams spotted at strip club with Jack Harlow because Jack Harlow put up a picture of them on his Instagram. So I read into it and sure enough, Jack Harlow posts this picture of him and Lou Williams at what is, what is the strip club called? Magic city, magic city. And as you say, it's one of the most famous ones around. Every rapper raps about magic city or, you know, (laughs) if like they say, like, if you like, if you're up and coming rapper and like your song is played at magic city and the girls start, you know, shaking their stuff and like a lot of money gets, gets through, Blown that that song is like a certified hit like there's like it will absolutely take over the charts so a lot of atlanta rappers test their stuff out at uh magic city i know migos have played a ton of songs there future um they they, they try out all their songs at magic city it's pretty funny really? that's yeah. really interesting i did not know that well good for jack harlow but anyway he tweets out or puts on instagram this picture of the two of them okay gets circulated he immediately deletes it then he goes to Twitter, Jack Harlow, and basically tweets uh, something like reminiscing about the old days with me and Lou Will, like insinuating that this is an older picture of the two of them. But they're wearing masks in the picture. He deletes the tweet. And then Lou Williams comes out and is like, look, I was at the strip club, okay? We wore masks. Like, let me live my life. Which, honestly, Jason, I – feel him and I feel for all the NBA players I mean they're stuck in this bubble obviously for all the right reasons but bro, like I mean you gotta live a little I mean in Lou Will's case he went to the strip club of of all places um but I I mean what what do you what do you think because I I just feel like all that negative like publicity that he got was just kind of unfair to him yeah, he also mentioned that the way he was just there to get takeout because the wings are delicious there, which is uh, that you know that's that's interesting. What'd you say? I'm sorry. I I said strip clubs can have really good food. Not that I know from experience, but like 
they could have some really good too. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure the, the, there's probably a better wing place than the Magic City Strip Club around the Atlanta area. Um, but, you know, if those are his favorite wings, those are his favorite wings. You know, can't hate on the guy. But I just think, uh, you know, if a club – I'm not – I don't want to tell someone how to mourn a loss or how to cope or anything like that. But if I just buried someone, I probably wouldn't be racing to the strip club. But – at the same time, I wasn't uh, I wasn't quarantined in the bubble and all that stuff and whatever you know you might need to might need to hang out with your good buddy Jack Harlow at the strip club. You also sent me that article about him and Kendrick Perkins, yeah, uh, going going back and forth, which I thought was funny because I think Pen- Kendrick Perkins should just shut up. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of his. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, basically, Kendrick Perkins came out and was like. Zion Williamson, this young, the young rookie, like leaves and he's fine and he doesn't do anything bad and he comes back fine. And then you leave and you go to the strip club and you're a veteran player, like yada yada. Like, come on now, bro. Like, Kendrick Perkins just likes to start beef with everyone, and that's some stupid beef to really like get into. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I just think it's really annoying. Like, it, it, it happened. It came and went. He, so Lou Will had to test or test had to quarantine for ten days, I yeah. think. And I mean, what's the difference? He'll take a test every day for those ten days. Hopefully, he comes back negative, and then you know it, it's in the rearview mirror. It, it is. My it is. only concern is like because he's really not facing any penalty for this, right? His only penalty is you have to quarantine, which is what everyone has to do when they first re-enter the bubble however like if other players look at this like oh i can just go to magic city when i like whenever like it does like it doesn't matter like i can just do whatever like i I just hope that you know when players leave the bubble for whatever reason uh they don't you know just go about doing whatever and and fuck it all up because i do think the nba does have a really good thing going on uh with the bubble the bubble here Right, you don't want one bad apple to spoil it for everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, move it, before we move on to NFL news real quick, uh, just go over – I want to go over the WNBA very quickly. So Sabrina Ionescu um, had her season – or career debut, rather, in the WNBA against the Seattle Storm, and she didn't look too hot. Uh and, you know, obviously, you know, she's supposed to be the next big thing and the truth, but she had 12 points on four for 17 from the field, shot 0 for 8 from three, had six boards, four assists, and four turnovers. So, you know, for those who don't watch the WNBA, Seattle is actually one of the best defensive teams in the, uh, in the entire league. They have the reigning defensive uh, player of the year. Um, but uh, you still would like to see a little bit more from Sabrina. I'm sure this – She'll probably turn it around knowing her work ethic and her talent. But uh, sort of a bummer for Liberty fans because you thought you were getting uh, the next big deal and, and she didn't do it. And there's we also got a, a Bill Lambeer headline. Yeah. Wait, um, before you get into that, Jason, real quick, I want to ask you, okay. and maybe you think this is a stupid question, but I'm just curious. If you are a hyped-up athlete like Phenom, right, yeah. You're making your career debut. Do you want to? Do you want it to be in this scenario where there are no fans, or do you oh, want? Of course, it sucks. Oh, would I rather have no fans or a packed house? I think. I mean, if you're hyped up like that, like she was, I think you probably want the packed house because I mean, she's played. You know the way she's played at Oregon, and you know she's played in front of people her whole life with the, the talent and the type of player she is. Uh, and you know, usually basketball is just played in front of fans. So I think it's definitely weird and probably th- threw her off a little bit, but I mean, it just, well, it wasn't just her out there. I mean, you, that applies to every player on the court. Yeah. So even though it was her debut, I mean, everyone was going through the experience of not having fans being in the bubble and the whole, the whole weird, weird, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, so, so, so anyways, Bill Lambeer, former Piston, um and you know one one with the bad boys back to back right there 
And he was also a three-time WNBA champion with the Detroit Shock as their head coach. He's now coaching the Las Vegas Aces. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, you got to look this up. Look up, uh, just look up Bill Lambeer, probably click on news section on Google and you'll find it. Um, but his hair, Brandon, um, basically he is wearing like a black sweatband under all of his hair, which is just draped over. He looks like he's out of the Karate Kid uh, or something like that. But it's funny because the Aces actually on their injury report, they had they listed Liz Cambage out for medical examination. Kelsey Plume is out for angels, ankle surgery. <laughs> And then the third, the third one is Bill Lambeer's barber out, unknown whereabouts, whereabouts unknown. So uh, they they roasted him pretty hard, but he definitely needs uh definitely needs a haircut or just wear a hat or to figure it out because it is a tough look for Bill Lambeer out there. I didn't I didn't see that. I did not see that tweet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, bro. I'm trying to like, what does he look like? Like a good comparison? I don't know. I say you guys go look, take a look for yourself. Let us know your thoughts. What does Bill and Beer look like to you? I don't really know. He looks gross. I don't know. I don't, I don't like. I don't like the headband. The headband underneath that, like, it's just I don't know. He's I'm trying not, to do something that's not working for him. Yeah, but he needs to rethink things for sure. Anyways, moving on here. Going to talk some NFL. So, first of all, Brandon, um, I guess we could really start anywhere. These are all kind of pretty big headlines. I guess we'll talk about the news that just broke right before we started recording because this is pretty interesting. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, who we, you know, we talked about two weeks ago becoming the highest paid player like ever, half a billion dollars. Um, he is now put that money to some good use in Kansas City. He's now a part owner of the Royals. Um, and for those who don't know – his dad was a professional baseball player. He grew up around uh, MLB clubhouses and the locker rooms and all that stuff. And it's also – I just think it's also funny because this is a guy who was drafted. He was in the MLB draft. He got drafted. He could have played baseball. And everyone you – know what would you say? You know who drafted him? The Tigers. Yeah. 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 Um, so this this is a kid who could have played baseball and everyone always says when people have this decision between baseball and football, they say, well, you got to play baseball. You, you play way longer. Your body's in better shape. You make more money, whatever. Mm-hmm. He said, fuck that. I'm going to get the biggest contract in sports history, any sport. And uh, then I'm going to be an owner of a baseball team. So I just think it's pretty cool how he went from being drafted as a baseball player to an owner of a team in about, uh, like, what, like three years' time, four years' time? That's that's a pretty quick turnaround, Brandon. Bro, not even. I wonder if, like, when that is that – you don't just, like, wake up one day and be like, I'm going to be part owner of the Royals. Uh, it's probably a plan that he's had in place for some time now. Maybe he was waiting for his contract uh, extension and then was going to be like, well, I think today's the day. But it's awesome. And like you said – He's got that baseball background. It's a great investment. Um, and now he's the part owner of a major league baseball team. He's got endless things going for him. Playing in pro-am golf tournaments, arguably the greatest quarterback we've ever seen uh, in our lifetime next to Tom Brady. But um, he's got a crazy bright future ahead of him, and it's a really cool move. I feel like it doesn't happen like that, you never really see things like that happen in sports, especially like in our lifetime. Although recently, like I'm sure you've seen the whole like Mets discussion. I was about to say, but Mahomes yeah, they're up for guys. sale. And, like A Rod's like trying to buy it's this whole. Isn't thing. that crazy that Mahomes became a baseball owner before A Rod? That's yeah. pretty crazy because I mean he's been in the discussions for a long time. And you have Mahomes who's currently playing yeah he's an athlete still like yeah i mean he's not even five years into the league yeah hasn't even touched his prime if you ask me yeah so it's it's really cool to see the the um and you know too like the royals they have a bright future ahead of them they're they're rebuilding so i mean it's definitely a great investment for him and really cool that that news broke right before um we got into our recording today but jason I don't know about you, but I don't think there's going to be an NFL season, and I don't know how the hell it's going to happen. I disagree with you. 
Disagree? Yeah. So, all right. Tell me how it's going to play out. I mean, I think it's going to play out similar to baseball. I think the season will start how many weeks they get into the season. And if they make it throughout the season, that's a whole different discussion. But I do think the season will start because the NFL cares about their player safety uh, less than anyone else. I mean, these guys all get CTE. They all end up with broken backs. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible, uh, but it's, it's a great sport. It's f- fun as hell to watch. I'll tell you that much. But uh, I mean, I think, I think it will happen. It will start. Um, Roger Goodell, you wrote here, he sends a letter to fans saying we're fucked. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough, but I, there's no preseason. I do, th- I do like the season's going to start. Like the NFL, like they like the season will start. I don't think they'll finish, but I do think it will start. Okay, hear me out, Jay. Okay. The only way the NFL happens is if there is an NFL bubble, which needs to be massive. But the MLB didn't do a bubble. Well, you're right, but the MLB is is baseball bro you guys are 60 feet apart from each other in the nfl you are helmet to helmet (sighs) huffing and puffing and the dude in front of you and you're touching everyone bro there's no way but there's there's no way there's no plan for a bubble and there is a plan for the season to start so i mean it's gonna start look at baseball baseball could be screwed and we're four games yeah no that's what i'm saying i don't think it's gonna finish i don't think the season will finish I think they get in a week, maybe two weeks tops, and that's it. Sure, but the season still started. Bro, I think they would be – I also think you're going to have way more dudes opting out in the NFL than you had in baseball prior to the season starting. We've already seen 10 guys opt out. Well, a lot of them are Patriots players, which, by the way, is – some some Adam Schefter released a tweet about him talking to an NFL executive, and he thinks it's pur- purposeful because this is the year this this upcoming draft will have Trevor Lawrence in it, who is supposed to be like the best quarterback ever. Like if you could if you could go on a computer and build like your perfect QB, it's like it's literally like Trevor Lawrence. Like that's who you want. So they're saying that the Patriots are masterminding another scheme so that they can pick first and get Trevor Lawrence. I mean, think about it. You get, you have all these guys, uh, you got, you know, Gronk and Brady are gone. Then you have Donta Hightower, Pat Chung. That's your, that's your starting safety and your, your best linebacker right there. They're opting out. And then you got about five, like four or five more guys opting out on the Pats and the number keeps going up. Uh, Belichick going to opt out as head coach. He might. Who knows? But I'm just saying, I think they're trying to maneuver here for for Trevor Lawrence. But I think I think speaking of college football, there's no way college football is played. Like there's absolutely no shot that is played. I think yeah. pro and college are totally different in that regard. But um, unless I was listening to 97.1 a couple of weeks ago, and they were saying should uh, college football be played in the spring. Um, Unless it's played in the spring, but yeah, I bro, at this point, are things going to be better in the spring though? Like, do we even know that? Who fucking knows? Like, what is? I mean, I don't know. There could be a vaccine by then. Like, things could be totally different, but we don't know. We we can't predict the future. Um, I mean, Doctor Fauci can't, but like, you know, we can't. Um, we just can't throw a ball as straight as me or you can. can. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, we we didn't talk about it. I wanted to bring up uh that. I don't know if you read anything about his him talking about the first pitch, but le- the days leading up to him throwing out the first pitch, he met up with like some high schoolers and was playing catch every day. He was playing catch every day leading up to him throwing out the first pitch. Were they standing like 15 feet to the right of where he meant to throw it, or like, was it a diagonal? No, he, bro, he said he, he said he was feeling fine. He was literally feeling fine. He woke up the day of opening night. And he had COVID-like symptoms. <laughs> he said his arm was, like, incredibly sore. And he was like, well, oh instead of – Oh, my God. Bro, that's the – Get I mean, out of here. Read it. Read into it. That's what he said. And I, I don't give it. a fuck what he said, dude. And he, he, 
You know what? We talk about your arms that sore. Do you know how sore it has to be to do something like that? <laughs> no. It might be broken. We we talked about this before. This is another prediction on bagels and locks that has totally came true. Uh, his first pitch was way worse than fifty cents, hands down. Ah, it's it's tough. It's a tough call, dude. What? I don't know. Fifties. Bro, you think Bro, but like you would think, like look at Fauci and look at fifty. Who do you think would be able to throw a baseball, man? Fauci was an athlete all his life, dude. And then you have Fifty Cent, who I don't know. We'll have to ask the fans on our on our Instagram at Bagels and Locks Pod. If you're not following, yeah. we'll put up yeah. a poll. We'll see what the people think. Whether Fifty Cent's first pitch is worse or Doctor Anthony Fauci's. Also, I was in my grandpa's house uh, two days ago. He he got a Fauci bobblehead in the mail. Someone sent him one. It's kind of hilarious. What? It's so funny. Fauci bobblehead. Yeah. Also, he is the highest selling baseball card of all time. Though. Yes, yes, yes. I sent. Yep, I sent that to you. We forgot that. So much for this NFL yeah. discussion. Yeah. But, so much. Right. So, so much for our NFL discussion. <laughs> anyways, before we move on to the last part of our show, we got to talk about this Jamal Adams trade because this is fucking huge news. This guy is like probably the best safety in the league, if not top two or three. Uh, has been complaining about the Jets the past month or so. They said, "Fuck it, you're out of here." Shipped him off to Seattle. And now I think Seattle might be like, I mean, they're one of the, they were already one of the best teams in the NFL, but that team just got insanely better when you add Jamal Adams back there. I mean, he is an incredible talent. Um, One of the hardest hitting guys in the league. One of the smartest guys to play the safety position. Uh, I mean, he, he can transform a defense and that defense was already stacked. Uh, So it should be very interesting. They're also in a division with the 49ers who last like two or three years. They've been separated by like a game. Um, And, you know, so should be super interesting to see if they can win that division or if not, they'll probably make the wild card and could, could have a rematch up in the NFC championship. I don't know. I really think the Seahawks could go to the Super Bowl this year, man. I think like that's how big of a move this is. And Russell Wilson just gave uh, birth. He didn't win. He's got his son, Win. Pretty Dude, crazy. He fucking – he Instagrammed or tweeted some shit when the – like, of him holding the baby and it said, like, winning or something like that. Yeah. It was like, dude, like, how long have you been waiting to tweet that shit? Like, how many months <laughs> ago did you decide on the name? Like, come on. Right. I just – I don't know. Interesting name. He needs and to – he needs to win now. That's – that's, that's right, what's right. got to happen. I mean, we talk about the Seattle Seahawks. Jason, you can't forget the Seattle Kraken, the of NHL. Of course not. Team. Uh, their logo, if you ask me, is one of the coolest logos in all of sports. The jerseys look I love so it. Cool. I love the color scheme, how it looks. Uh, like, the bro, the eye, you know, like the, the mm-hmm, red the eye. The red eye. Really cool. um, I lo- I'm all for, like, the, the color scheme, the, the look of the jerseys. Um, really, you know exciting stuff there i they're like uh golden knights it's like rare that you know anything like this happens also with the the washington football team we're seeing these name changes and whatnot but i love it i i think it looks sweet yeah i think that uh it should be interesting because we saw the success that the golden knights had making it all the way to the stanley cup in their first year um right with the way the expansion draft works and everything how successful the seattle kraken could be do i think they'll make it all the way no do i think they'll be really good yeah because i think the difference was uh mark andre Fleury, the the hall of fame goalie that the golden knights got um in that draft i think it's gonna be hard to get another hall of fame goalie just luckily but yeah um i think they will be good with the the way that's all set up Uh, should be very interesting but uh, I think it's an interesting time to have an expansion team. I know that NHL has talked about having 32 teams for a long time, but in my opinion, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, like, I feel like that sport's kind of not really trending up or down or anywhere. I feel like it's just yeah. kind of been pretty stagnant for a long time. Um, yeah, it was a great city, though. To, of to course. Have- so great that they took their basketball team and moved them to Oklahoma City. But that's that's a discussion for a different episode, I, I would suppose. Time. Um, should we should we get down to it, Jason? 
Should well, we b- before we do, we got to talk about Mike Tyson real quick because Mike Tyson is coming back to fight Roy yeah. Jones Jr. And by the way, guys, Mike Tyson is 54 years old. So his last fight was <laughs> in like 2004 or five, uh, like 15 years ago. Um, but that, that should definitely be interesting. Wish we would have got a live. Brandon t- asked me how many, how many losses do you think Mike Tyson has in his career? And I, I didn't know. I just, I guess six and six was the correct answer. How many wins does he have in his career? Cause that, I don't know. Uh, anyways, well, Brandon looks that up. I'll go <laughs> on. Uh, there's like an undercard with a bunch of different fights. So I don't know if you heard about this, Brandon, but Jake Paul is fighting Nate Robinson, which is just like, what? What the hell? <laughs> like, what is the world come? Nate Robinson, bro, is like this. Yeah. They say he's a great athlete, though. I mean, obviously, he's won the, the slam dunk contest. They said he uh, got like football scholarships to play cornerback. Um, so they say he's a crazy athlete, but like, I think that you can be crazy athletic, but if you've never boxed a day in your life, that's that's kind of tough. You gotta you gotta get training and stuff. And I know Jake Paul's been training for like a couple of years now to do the boxing thing. So I think that could be a really interesting match. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the Mike Tyson thing is is going to be awesome. And my money's on Tyson, honestly. I think he'll win that because he's a crazy motherfucker. I don't know if you know about him and his story, but look it up i mean he's he's come from a broken home at a young age was doing like coke at like age 11 and shit like he's had it like very tough and boxing was like his escape and way out from that and if you saw how fat he was a couple years ago and the shape he's in now i mean this is a man on a mission and a man determined and Um, i i i think he could really do some serious damage uh 50 career wins Uh, so 50 and six yeah and okay 40 44 of them were by a knockout. So do what you will with that. Like you say, Mike Tyson's going to come back, is coming back, and will be a beast as he has always been. Um, so really exciting stuff there. All right, Jason, I'm excited for this, uh, our, our last and final segment here today on Bagels and Locks. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about <laughs> – are four places that we would be willing to leave the NBA bubble in Orlando for. Uh, this is a hypothetical scenario. If Jason and I were as skilled to be uh, in the NBA right now in the bubble, where would we decide to break this quarantine, this bubble, and where would we venture off to? So, Jason, let's start with you. Where is the first place you are going in to leave the bubble in Orlando? I'm not gonna lie, my shit, my list sucks today. But uh, oh. my first, my first one was home, because like if you're if you're in the bubble quarantine, you probably miss your family and your own bed and your dogs if you have them. If you're Very a cat true. person, fuck you. Um, but if uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I would miss miss home. Is so that'd probably be the first place I'd want to go. It's a pretty boring answer, but it's probably it's not as true. Bro, I don't I don't blame you. Like maybe they're getting homesick. I mean, they got a wife and kids and dogs and a pool that's theirs. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I mean, I feel you. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit biased because I worked in Orlando last summer for two months. So a li- oh, couple- you're not going far. You're just you're right outside there. Um, yeah, I got some specifics here. So. Okay. The first place I'm going to is I'm taking the team and we are going to a a country cowboy bar. Okay, so we're not going to the club. We're going to – I went to one of these when I was there. It's yeah, I, I, I remember the Snapchats. Bro, they don't – because they, they, they don't have anything like that here in Michigan. It's like every everyone there knows every dance. And they're all line dances and shit. It's all country <laughs> music. It's crazy. It's so much fun. I was like kind of skeptical about going there at first. And then as soon as we got there, I was like, no, we're like, we're not leaving. Those places are awesome. They only have them in the South as far as I know. So yes, if, if anyone in the bubble is listening right now, you guys got to go to uh, a, a country cowboy bar, if you will. They're a blast. All, All right. right. Next up. Next up, my next stop, 
I'm going to Magic City in Atlanta. I heard the wings there are absolutely to die for. So that is the second place that I would go. Okay. And, you know, maybe besides the wings, I might uh, I might stay for a while and check out the live entertainment that they have. Spend but, a little time, a little money. Yeah, but uh, Magic City, that's, that's, that's my second spot. Bit of a drive, but worth the drive. It's oh, I'm flying if I'm an NBA player, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, wait, what am I thinking? Worth I mean, the you're, you're walking to the local fucking <laughs> bar. I'm flying to Magic City. Yep, you're right. You're right. Why would they drive? Um, okay, I'm with you on that one. Um, my next stop is another one that's local to the south, and that is a fast food restaurant called Pollo Tropical. Uh, this is a grilled chicken fast food place they only have in the south. It is amazing, bro. It's so good. They have really good lunch specials. I ate there like every day for lunch <laughs> when I was in Orlando. Um, what can I say? I mean, you download the app, you get like free food every week. Um, free food to them isn't really shit, but listen, Pollo Tropical, I would be there every day. It's incredibly worthy to go. Some of the best grilled chicken you'll ever have in your life, hands down. If you are in Florida right now, listening to this episode, those odds are slim, but Hey, go to Pollo Tropical. It's worth the drive. Yeah, don't don't follow any quarantine laws or anything in Florida. Make sure you spread the virus as much as you can down there. Yeah. Not enough of it going around in that state. Third place that I would go is uh Vegas, especially this time of year with MLB opening weekend. I would love to just be plopped on one of those luxury chairs just watching all 40 games going on at once just nonstop just emptying my wallet. Like that yeah. would just be incredible. Other than the coronavirus uh, taking place there, unreal. That's that. That'd be the third place I would go. Vegas is definitely a hot spot right now. Not yeah. for the virus, but to go and play some bets and have a few drinks and have a good time. Sure, I'm I'm all for that. My third place I'd visit, and this one, I don't know. I I thought when I was like, this is a great place uh outlet malls i want to go get some deals i want to oh get some God. deals <laughs> am i wrong salvation army no uh-uh uh-uh bro florida outlet malls the orlando premium outlets orlando international outlets you go there you can find some some fuego clothes 60 percent. how about off. the flea markets in florida you ever been to those uh, COVID is sitting, hanging out over there. I'm of sure. course, but uh, it's so <laughs> I wouldn't I don't know. I mean, you could say the same for the outlet malls too. But I mean, at least you're outside the majority of the time. But yes, outlet malls. Anytime I go to Florida, it's a must. Um, especially like the Nike outlets. You know, find yourself a nice pair of shoes. Uh, for me, I need to go to the outlet malls. Yeah, Jason, your your final place you would visit to leave the bubble would be my final place i would leave the bubble to visit would be uh comerica park even though there's no fans allowed inside i don't know i'd finesse away i'd find a way if i'm like a world-renowned basketball player i don't know like i probably got a connection figure it out sit in the stands nobody's i think it'd be an interesting experience just to watch a baseball game when you're the only one in attendance uh and I've seen some some of these pictures that have been posted of these ballparks at sunset the past couple of days have been just absolutely mind blowing. Um, and I don't know, be cool, just cool to watch a sport in person. Like it's, it's I would, that's a crazy thing to think about. You know, Comerica Park's the right answer because I'm not going to Marlins Park. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Comerica Park. It's a good one. The sunset there last night looked uh, pretty bomb. Kush. Like yeah. everyone was thinking about it. Uh, my last place I would go to leave the bubble would honestly be a fishing trip. Taking the boys out on a boat and just like going fishing. They can the fish ocean. in the bubble though. They've been doing that. What? Yeah. Really? But yeah. I was thinking like uh like you go out, like you're on the boat, you know, you have some drinks and you're I didn't fishing. know you fish. Do you fish? No, I don't fish. But I did it once <laughs> in Florida and it was 
fun. <laughs> you're on a boat like like for hours and you're just eating and like drinking and having a good time. You just time. want a boat day. You don't even want a fishing trip. You don't have to fish, bro. And I don't catch fish anyway. Like I hate fish. <laughs> <laughs> I hate fishing, but it's one of the four things that I must, I would have to do. If I, <laughs> if I could like, bro, I'll take, you know, I'll take a rod and I'll yeet it out there and I'll give it a couple minutes. But other than that, I, it's fun. It's but fun it's something you want to, I don't know. That's hilarious. Cause I was going to say, I've never heard you talk about fishing a day in my life that I've known you. <laughs> And we talk about a lot of things. You yeah, know. yeah. There's not, there's nothing off the table for that. That could be a discussion between me and you. Uh, but uh, interesting list there. I'd say from the both of us, I think yeah. the fishing was definitely a fucking curveball, man. That was uh, <laughs> that was real strange. Um, thank okay, you guys thanks. for joining for us <laughs> this week on Bagels and Locks uh it's been fun no guests this week hopefully we can uh get someone soon but yeah sports are back got the w or oh my yeah we do have the WNBA, i guess but the nba will be back this thursday very exciting we got baseball got WNBA, got the ufc uh we which i cashed another main event by the way i'm just i'm i'm kicking the ufc's ass right now Wait, island baby let's keep it going yep and uh, always remember hashtag BHG, Backwards Hat Gang. Remember to follow us on Bagels and Locks Pod on Instagram. Uh, shout out to all of the, I think we have like 111, 112 followers now. We're over 100 followers, which is pretty awesome Thank in you. the short amount of time that the account has been up. Uh, make sure to leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Comment. We love interacting with you guys. Last yes. but not least, That's I got to give a shout out to Noah Nathan because he texted me just now saying, give me a shout out. So there you go, buddy. There's your shout out. If you made it all the way through the episode, you'll hear it. If if you didn't, I'll know. So I yeah, hope you listen this know. week. Yeah, uh, right. He doesn't, know, he doesn't know where we're at in the episode right now. Exactly. Noah, just so happened to be the very end. Noah Nathan, what's good, baby? Hopefully you made it to the end of the episode. And I said that as if he could, like, hear me through the laptop and you texting him. Yeah. Uh, which makes no sense. So we're going to leave it at that. Jason, it was a blast today. Hopefully baseball is back next week. But, yes, the NBA is returning. We have a lot more to come. So I am Brandon Rothenberg. You are Jason Silverstone. You are texting Noah Nathan. We will see you <laughs> later, guys. We will see you guys next week on Baby Take care, guys.